Nintendo Switch. Let me show you what's going on. Your port should not do this or this. Next step, just a symbol all the way down to the board level. Move the port and do our testing from there. We have the board out of the housing and I need to set up my equipment. While I do that, I will throw up my expected temperatures for this job. These temperatures are brought to you by the Amazon Associate links in the description. If you head to my video description and click on one of these links and buy any of this equipment, or if you buy anything during that session, a small portion of that purchase will go to supporting the channel. And I greatly appreciate it. It won't cost you an extra dime. First thing we're going to need to do is flood our anchor points with the primary ingredients of low melt. As our port has a bit of a wobble, I'm going to lock my hemostats onto it and we're going to try and pull it gracefully. Unfortunately, it does not look like it made much of a difference. That is a lot of torn pads. Fun, fun. Exciting! Let's go ahead and do our testing and make sure there are no secondary issues beyond the many issues it already has. We'll begin our testing on this capacitor here, which is attached to the Pi 3 USB on the back through the M92236. The line we do not want short to ground is this line going to the chip. It looks okay. Now let's test the rest of the capacitors around M92236. This capacitor right here has two lines going through the chip. In that case, one side will always be ground. As long as only one side is ground, we're okay. RCP capacitor. We do not want the line going to the chip to be short of the ground, and we appear to be okay there. Moving on up the board, we will check our MOSFET area. Check our little filter. Seems fine. Check our invincible fuse. Still being invincible. Let's check our test pads. None of these should have a pathway to ground. And none of them do. None of these should have a pathway to ground either. None of them do. We should not have a pathway to ground on this coil. And we do not. But we should have continuity through it. And we do. Now we're going to check around the BQ24193. Several of the capacitors around BQ24193 have two lines going to the chip. As stated, only one side should be ground. I just generally know which side to check at this point. And we're all looking good. Now we will test our Pi 3 USB, which is our USB-C controller chip. And the area we want to test is this big capacitor right here. And the line we do not want to show to the ground is the line going directly to the chip. And that appears to be fine. We'll check our little filters. We want continuity going from the port to the chip. We don't want any of these to be short of the ground. Very unlikely, considering we have no pads. Very good. So it appears that this disaster zone is our primary problem, but that's plenty. I kind of had a feeling and I saw how wobbly that port was. Two! Two pads! Ah, ah, ah. Tin those pads and we're going to tin some of these torn partials we can make use of. Now one of our favorite tools to the rescue, the pin grinder. If you were having to use a X-Acto to do this, it would be a forever job. Who am I kidding? It's still going to be a forever job, but that much more so without the pin grinder. Need to get a little bit more solder on these to work with. Let's make sure they're secure on there. Give them a gentle tug. This will be one long one because it is the same line. running everything a little bit long so that I can secure them down on the sides and up here. And take some care of cleaning. We're just brushing in one direction. We do need to clear it pretty thoroughly of flux so that we can dot our mask. So far so good. Next step is to secure everything in place. And we will do that by adding solder mask. The reason for doing this is when we flow the port into place, 
these solder joints will wet and the solder on the port will wet and if these are not secured down the port will suck these jumpers right off the board that'll do next step is to grab the uv lamp i'm just going to set it on here i'm going to step away and take a break and let it get a really thorough cure lamp is placed looks like we got a nice solid cure no movement very good I don't want to have to burn off the enamel. And using our normal method of putting a ball of solder on our tip, we just want to run the ball over the wires. I'm not really trying to make any contact with the tip itself. And tin up these wires real nice. But if it sucks up into the iron, we'll know it would not have survived the reflow. It appears every wire has survived, and we are prepped for port placement with a ball of solder on our tip. And again, we're not trying to make contact with the iron. Adequate. Standard procedure for flowing it into place. Pressing it down into place. I'm going to hold it into place until I see evidence of drying. Right, it does feel pretty solid. And that one's loose. That one's loose. Oh, we got a bunch of loose ones. Again. Start with a bowl of solder, get things going. Next step will be to thoroughly clean the board and the port, and then we'll perform a power test and cross our fingers. Hope we got it. If not, we'll have to do some more rework. I hope this video is being helpful to you in your repair journey. Just a reminder, if this is something beyond what you want to try yourself, I do offer these services. Just head over to micromage.repair, click free quote, fill out the form, and I'll get back to you personally. We're ready to do some testing. Moment of truth, we're using our power dongle on our benchtop PSU. You can watch the meters over here. What we want to see here is a quick jump in current and a quick drop down with no hanging. Like that, on that side, so that's good. Do we get it on both sides? Okay, we're getting it on both sides. That is a good sign. Now we've grabbed our modified iPhone Power Squid, which we've retrofitted with Nintendo Switch battery connectors. And we're going to plug in our OEM charger for quick activation. We want to see here a steady current draw. We want to see it go steadily up without hanging. It appears to be booting. We're going to use our dongle and see if we are docking, which is the big test here. And we are. Wow, that's excellent. 20 ripped pads and we got it on the first try we're back up and running on its battery and i just want to perform a few quick tests using my joy cons just to make sure it sees and charges them and it is Let's make sure it's seeing the networks it is and we want to make sure it is seeing bluetooth and it is as you can see the fan is spinning and if you look on the usb meter we are playing 15 volts at 0.86 we are fast charging excellent and if you enjoyed this video I think you'll enjoy this one right here. Click it and I'll see you there.